Hello, my friends, hello, and welcome once again to Stately Vaughn Manor, where it's Wednesday, which means it's Epic Comic Book Wednesday. Every Wednesday, I'll talk about a certain comic book graphic novel or comic book subject. Steve Donahue on his channel will talk about the same comic book graphic novel or comic book subject. It is our world's finest team up that we do once a week. And this week's a big one. This week, we're talking about Alan Moore and Brian Boland's Batman The Killing Joke from 1988. One of the most famous Batman comic book stories ever created. Most people at least know this one and The Dark Knight Returns. And if you're a Batman fan, for sure you've read this. For sure. And it's, in a lot of ways, a really impressive piece of work by Alan Moore, Brian Boland, and John Higgins, who did the coloring, I believe. Was John Higgins the colorist? Yes, John Higgins was the color artist. So this was a graphic novel that came out in 1988 about Batman and the Joker. The last time I read this comic book was in 1989, maybe? 88 or 89? It's been a while since I've read this. But I read it a couple times. Because when I first read it, there were things I was tremendously impressed by, and there were things that really bothered me about this story. And so I was wondering what it was going to be like to read it again. And now there are things I'm tremendously impressed by, and things that really bother me about this story. Those. Those things have not changed, except the things that bothered me bother me even more now. Because now I know what has come, what has been the result of this story and The Dark Knight Returns and some other stories that happened in the 80s. The end result of some of the things that were going on in these stories. So this was the 80s, the grim and gritty 80s. Grim and gritty, man. That was it in the 80s. None of that kid stuff in comic books anymore. Silver, The Silver Age and Silver Age comics were kind of looked down on by us sophisticated comic book readers in the 1980s. And so, yeah, Grim and Gritty was it, man. And there was no character more grim and gritty than Batman. Yeah, Batman. And so we had this book come out. So... Let me state the most obvious thing about this book first, and that is the artwork is magnificent. Brian Boland just does an incredible job with this comic book. It's just amazing. The artwork is incredible. So, yeah, the, the Batman, the Joker, they've never looked better than they do in this book. Uh, the artwork is really, really, really good. So, yeah, there's that. I mean, this is an iconic panel now. I mean, we've all seen at least this if we have never even seen anything else from this story. So the artwork, magnificent. But let's talk about the story by Alan Moore. Okay, so what's this about? Well, it's about the Joker, man, and he escapes prison again, like he always does, or he escapes Arkham again, like he always does. And he decides, his, this is his plan now, he's going to kidnap Commissioner Gordon and drive Commissioner Gordon insane. There's a whole plan to do this, and to show Commissioner Gordon that a sane orderly world is just nonsense and that it's all chaos and horror that's the way things are man commissioner gordon thinks the joker this plan of the jokers is really dumb and there's no chance of success but it's the joker's plan okay fine so the joker and his really dumb plan so that's basically what this is about but Aside from that, this is also an origin story of the Joker. And we get some flashback scenes from the Joker before he was the Joker. So we have a couple things going on in this 
comic book. This graphic novel. It's a, it's a comic book. So we have a couple things going on in The Killing Joke. And then, of course, Batman has to hunt down the Joker and save Commissioner Gordon. So the origin stuff with the Joker, the origin story, is fantastic. It is the best Joker origin story that's ever been told. It's the best Joker origin story that will ever be told. It's great. Joker or Joker's origin in this is, is just great. It is not really the official origin story for the Joker because DC Comics, they're a bunch of idiots. I'm sorry, but I mean, and they have to, you know, redo origins over and over and over and over again and change stuff all the time for no reason. But really, there's never been a better origin story with this, so they should have just stuck with this origin and made it like the official origin for the Joker. So that's all, that's all great. Some of the other stuff, though, as far as the story goes, a lot of the writing is really accomplished. It's really good. I mean, Alan Moore was, was a great comic book writer. However, there's some stuff with this comic book that I've never... Well, it's always kind of sucked. Okay, so let's get to the part with Commissioner Gordon hanging out with his daughter, Barbara, who is Batgirl, or who was Batgirl. Barbara Gordon is Batgirl, okay? She's Batgirl. Keep that in mind for what's going to happen next, okay? So the Joker shows up with a gun, and Barbara Gordon is just like, what? And then he shoots Batgirl. Graphically and violently shoots Batgirl in a horrific, violent scene. So, what's the problem with that? First of all, she opens the door like this, which is realistic. If you open the door and somebody has a gun, that's going to be your reaction, right? You're just going to be like, what is... what? That would be your reaction in the, in the real world. Two things, though, that are pretty important going forward in this story here. So, thing number one, DC com the DC Comics universe is not the real world. It's not even close to being the real world. It shouldn't be the real world, okay? It, it doesn't work. DC Comics doesn't work if you try to make it realistic, okay? This is a Batman comic. Batman is a guy who fights crime with a teenage kid who he's dressed in underoos and a cape, okay? And the police department's like, what, child endangerment? <laughs> We're fine with it, Batman. I mean, this is stuff, things that happen in Batman comics and in DC comics in general could not happen in the real world. It wouldn't happen in the real world. You don't want them to happen in the real world. There's no point in making it realistic, but okay, so there's that. That's, that's number one. Number two, this is Batgirl. Okay, how many times has Batgirl been in this exact situation where somebody comes up with a gun? What, a gazillion times? Batgirl is a veteran of a million fistfights and battles. I mean, she's just, she's Batgirl. She's fought criminals a gazillion times. Every time someone's come up with a gun, she took care of him. So what would really happen here if this was actually Barbara Gordon and anybody else was writing this who knew Barbara Gordon and the Batgirl? The first thing would happen is that she would kick that gun out of his hand right quick and then she would beat the hell out of the Joker. That's what would really happen. She's Batgirl for crying out loud. She's a hero. She would... She would take care of him right quick. She would be in motion immediately. No, she's just like, what? Just like the rest of us would be in the real world. But she's, she's bad girl. Okay, so there's that. So then you have the Joker shooting one of the best heroes in the DC universe, bad girl. And then they beat the crap out of Commissioner Gordon and, and kidnap Commissioner Gordon and take him to this old rundown carnival place. 
And so you have that happen. And so they take Commissioner Gordon to the rundown carnival place. And after the scene of horrific violence, we have a little bit more of the origin story, which is fantastic. That's really good. And Batman comes and sees Barbara Gordon. What's going on? Oh, the Joker took my father. He's different now. He's really crazy. No, the Joker's always been crazy. The Joker is not different. It's the DC Comics editors that were different, okay, by this point. <laughs> and annoyingly used Barbara Gordon, Batgirl, as a plot device. That's all she is. She's nothing else in this story. She's just a means to motivate other characters, right? That's all. Doesn't get to do anything except get shot and be, the motiv be a force of motivation for the other characters. That's it. That's all you're good for, Barbara Gordon. Anyway, that annoyed me. And then once Commissioner Gordon gets to the crazy old carnival, the Joker sends him through the funhouse of insanity and forces Commissioner Gordon, who's now naked, because you got to let's just make Commissioner Gordon naked. Why not? And he is forced to see photographs that the Joker took of his naked daughter who is shot. So this is pretty dark. This is about as dark as you want to get, I think. Way darker, actually, because this is a Batman comic. That's the thing. This is a Batman comic book. And there are people out there who are like, yeah, man, that's fine. That's how Batman comic books are. No, that's how Batman comic books are now. That's how comics are now. They did... Listen, here's the thing. Somebody, this is the problem. And th this is where this just went wrong <laughs> and where comic books in a big way went wrong too. It's with DC Comics editors who are just like, yeah, man, you're Alan Moore, man. You've made us money in the past. Just do anything. We don't, just do whatever you want, man. We're cool with it. <laughs> Shoot Barbara Gordon, one of our best characters. Yeah, go ahead. We don't care. Yeah, that's fine. That's all good. I mean, and that attitude has continued to the present day at DC Comics, where they're just like, what? Superman, he's just going to, like, tell the world who he is and give up his secret identity that's, that he's had for 70 years for, like, totally good reasons so they didn't endanger his loved ones? Sure. Yeah, that's totally stupid. But, yeah, go ahead and do it. We don't care. We'll just retcon it later. We'll just retcon everything we don't like. That's what we do now. Nothing has any consequences in DC Comics. So yeah, that kind of thing is started around this time. So what an editor should have done, right? And I don't totally blame Alan Moore for this or what happened. I think Alan Moore does, though. Alan Moore has distanced himself, distanced himself from this story for the, this very reason. Right. It's, a, it's supposed to be a Batman comic. Now, somebody should have taken Alan Moore aside and been like, Alan, listen, this isn't 2000 AD, okay? This, this is a Batman comic book. Rein it in a little bit. Maybe don't shoot and cripple Barbara Gordon and then have the Joker take naked pictures of her and then make Commissioner Gordon naked for no reason at all. Maybe don't do that. You see... The stuff that are, the great stuff in this, because there's great stuff in this, the great stuff in this would have been great without that, right? You still could have had a great comic book without doing all of that nonsense. And sure, that would be putting limitations on Alan Moore, but you know what? DC Comics, they've had limitations for years back in the olden days, and you know what the, the writers of these comics had to do? They had to use their imagination to come up with interesting stories that go around those limitations. Maybe Alan Moore would be forced to come up with, like, I don't know, an interesting plan for the Joker. Maybe one that wasn't doomed to failure. But no, we, we ended up with this. And the main problem, aside from this, see, see here's the thing. Superman, Batman, all of the classic DC comic book characters, 
these are comic books that don't have to be written for kids, right? But they should be written so kids can read them, okay? Because we all fell in love with comic books, at least everybody in my generation anyway. We fell in love with comic books when we were kids. We read Batman and Superman and Spider-Man and all those comic book characters, and we loved them. We could read these as, ch as, as children, and adults could read them. Everybody could read these comic book stories. That's the way comic book stories about Batman and Superman and all of those DC comic book characters should be. Okay? That's how it should be. You shouldn't have to worry about picking up a Batman comic and not letting your kid read it because, heaven forbid, there might be a full-page spread of Batman and Catwoman having graphic sex or some horrific violence that even Stephen King wouldn't write about. You shouldn't have to worry about that, right? Your kid should be able to read a Batman comic book. Not anymore. Thanks, Alan. See, and at the time, this was like, this wasn't in the main Batman comic book. This was a one-shot graphic novel, you know, for mature readers. But of course, the stuff that happened in here influenced all the other comic books that were printed. And you ended up with comic book writers who had far less skill than Alan Moore did try to write stuff like this, you know? And suddenly, all throughout the DC universe, you have stories that are trying to do in the normal DC continuity what Alan Moore was doing in Watchmen or this. And first of all, they didn't have Alan Moore's talent. And second of all, that kind of stuff just shouldn't be... I mean, you ended up with identity crisis because of this, you know. This was a consequence. Again, I probably shouldn't blame Alan Moore for this, even though Alan Moore kind of blames himself for it. I blame mostly DC Comics itself, itself for just like being like, yeah, whatever, man, that's fine. Now, one thing I did like about this is that, aside from the great origin story of the Joker, is that when Batman finally hunts the Joker down, you have this scene at the end. And here you're seeing a huge difference between Alan Moore's Batman and, say, Frank Miller's Batman from The Dark Knight Returns. Dark Knight Returns. Frank Miller really didn't know who the Batman was. He kind of changed Batman forever, but he didn't really have a grasp of who Batman actually was as a character. He doesn't understand superheroes, I don't think, really. Whereas Alan Moore does, because what does Batman do? Even after all the crazy, horrible stuff the Joker does, the Joker's like, go ahead, kick the crap out of me. And Batman's like, I don't want to kick the crap out of you. I want to help you. That's what I want to do. That's all what I've always wanted to do. You don't have to be crazy. You don't have to, to be like alone without help. I Let me help you. I don't want to beat you up. And see, this is the thing with Batman. At one time, Batman wasn't just this obsessed, vengeance-filled vigilante character. Batman was actually a legitimate hero who wanted to help people. That was the thing about Batman. He was, you know, he was a dark character, but he was a legitimate hero. He didn't want to... He wasn't out there just to hurt people. He actually did want to help people, even crazy villains like the Joker. And that's something that Alan Moore got right, right? So while he messed up the DC Comics world in here a bit, he didn't mess up Batman himself. He got Batman the character right. And so I appreciated that. And there's actually a lot about this that I do like, uh, aside from just the fantastic artwork. Uh, there's really good character work in here. The origin story for the Joker is fantastic. Like I said, the best. Batman is presented very well in this. Batgirl, not so much. Barbara Gordon, no. She's just the victim who motivates other characters. So, 
Still, I have very mixed feelings about this comic book, and that's all I have to say about it. Thank you for joining me once again. Be sure to catch Steve Donahue's video about this, and I will catch you next time.